Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome back to another On The Road video brought to you by AppliantVideo.com. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Today we're working on a Whirlpool over the range microwave. The customer's complaint is that the blower is a, a little noisy and uh, doesn't work on certain speeds. So we've already diagnosed that the issue is already in the actual blower itself. So today we'll be replacing that part. The tools you will need to complete this repair are a number two Phillips screwdriver. To begin the repair, we first must remove the grill. There are two number two Phillips screws that hold the grill in at the left and right sides. We're going to be removing them both. Once the screws have been removed, we can go ahead and lift out and up on the grill and set it aside. Next, we need to remove the wrap. Uh, to do so, originally this is going to be installed above a range. Uh, it does have to be uninstalled from that position and set down in a workable position so you can get to all the screws. So, uh, To begin, we're going to be removing the nine screws on the very back. And these screws are all number two Phillips. We can, we can now remove the screws on the top, and there are, there are several. Uh, we're gonna begin by removing the ones that hold the actual blower fan bracket on. And there's two on this one. Once the two screws have been removed, we can lift up on the top side of the uh, bracket here, and then slide it out from the, two from the two clips in the back. We'll set this aside. Be careful when you're handling any metal here. Uh, some of the metal is very sharp. So once all the screws have been removed from the back and the uh, top of the appliance, there were several screws underneath the actual uh, microwave to actually secure the bottom of the wrap on the microwave. So we're gonna return it to the uh, front position and then flip it over on its back. We're now going to remove the eight Phillips screws that secure the wrap on the bottom. Uh, they go down the left side and the right side. So it's just the four on the side. Once all the screws have been removed, we can now uh, set the microwave in the upright position so we can remove the wrap. Now that the appliance is in the upright position, uh, to finish removing the wrap, we're going to go on each side and pull out from the back and then push out, or just pull out, I should say, uh, from the front. There are some clips on each side that the front of the wrap actually gets tucked into the actual chassis. just like that. Then we can go ahead and lift up on the wrap while fishing the actual uh, power cord here through the opening. So uh, be careful when you do so. Like I said, the, some of the metal is pretty sharp. So once that's fished through, we'll grab the wrap and then set the wrap aside. Now that the wrap's been removed, the first thing before diagnosing or touching any component, we want to make sure that the actual capacitor has been discharged. To discharge the capacitor, we're going to use some sort of insulated screwdriver and we're going to go across all three terminals and touch the ground or grounding component, just like this uh, sheet metal here. Make sure we rub them pretty well. And sometimes if they're holding a charge, uh, it'll spark here when you touch the uh, 
um, the screwdriver to the terminals and the ground. So now that it's been uh, fully discharged, it's now safe to work on the microwave. Now that we have access to the blower motor, we're going to remove it. To uh, remove the blower motor, we do have to remove the two number two Phillips screws that are behind the actual unit. They're hidden screws, they're recessed. So we'll go ahead and remove both of them. So once the last screw has been removed, we can now disconnect our Molex connector by pushing in on the clip and pulling it straight off, just like that. We can now take a hold of the whole blower motor assembly and pull it straight up. We'll remove it and set it aside. Now we're going to install our blower. To install the blower motor, we're gonna first seat it into position, and line it up right there. We'll go ahead and push on the Molex connector by lining it up and then pushing it directly on. We can now re-secure the blower motor with the two Phillips screws we removed earlier. The next step is to reinstall the wrap. We're going to fish the actual power cord through the opening for the blower motor. We're just gonna put it through and put the shell on the, uh, the unit here. And once we're trying to line up the actual shell, there are, there are tabs inside the actual sides on the left and right side that uh, get tucked in to the control panel area and then the left chassis of the unit. So we're just tugging them in before we install the screws. Um, once they are fully seated, if you pull on the shell, you won't be able to uh, pull that part out um, and it won't be loose and it'll be nice and flush. So just like that. So now we'll go ahead and uh, turn the unit around and start installing the screws. Next, we can install the nine number two Phillips screws on the rear of the appliance. Once the nine screws have been fastened, we can now reinstall the cover for the actual blower motor. So we're just gonna uh, put these two tabs inside the actual slots, and then we're gonna pivot the backside towards the top of the, uh, the wrap. And then we can secure the top side with the two number two Phillips screws that we removed earlier. The next step is to secure the top of the actual wrap with the six beveled screws, and these are number two Phillips as well. So they're gonna be the longer beveled screws, and these go across the top. Next step is to uh, gain access to the actual bottom of the appliance so we can secure the actual bottom of the wrap um, to the bottom of the appliance or the chassis. Now we can install the eight remaining screws on the bottom of the actual appliance. Um, there's gonna be four on the left side and four on the right side and they are all number two Phillips.
Now we can tip the appliance upright and install the grill. We're gonna light up the grill. Once the grill's been lined up, we can go ahead and secure the grill with the two number two Phillips screws we removed earlier. Now with the grill installed, this will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality in-home repair video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.